welcome to today's podcast. It's Andrea, your host, and I'm so excited for you to join me. I can't believe we are into September, turning the page almost on October. It's crazy how fast these these months are going. Um, but I'm really excited to introduce you to today's guest, Ian Halperin. He's the Executive Director of Community Relations and Marketing with Wiley ISD out of Texas. Got to meet him in person last year at the TSPRA event, um, but we have been connected longer than that. He's actually been in school PR for 24 years, and he's going to share, uh, you know, how Wiley uses social media with their 18,000 students and 20 campuses. Um, really talk about building great relationships to get those stories out. Uh, He's got a, a superintendent that loves to use video, uh, short video snippets to really connect with the community. Um, and he's also going to talk a little bit about their district app and then their branding campaign, uh, which is amazing. So I'm very excited for you to meet Ian. And I just got a question. Are you signed up for my newsletter? Um, gosh, we are knocking on the door of 10 thousand subscribers. Yes, on my little social media newsletter that comes out every two weeks, we have almost 10,000 people around the world that get that delivered to their email inbox every Tuesday morning. Well, every other Tuesday morning. Um, and it's got a lot of helpful articles and tips and examples of posts that are working well for schools, along with upcoming events that are happening that my company hosts. I want to invite you into that newsletter if you have not signed up. There is a uh, link right at the bottom of the show notes that you can get signed up. And you can also just visit my website, socialschoolforedu.com. There should be a little pop-up that comes up that will get you on to my newsletter list. So now let's get today get to today's uh, interview with Ian. Hey there, today's K-12 PR tip is a simple one and it's an easy way to get your Facebook followers to realize that you've got some other social media channels. Facebook actually allows you in your page information section on Facebook to link to your other social media sites. So if you just simply go over to the left hand side when you're on your desktop to edit page info and scroll all the way to the bottom, you're going to see that it says other accounts. Well, you can link link to Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and so many more, your YouTube channel. Um, and that way for your followers, when they're on your homepage, they're actually going to be able to see uh, that information right there and be able with a click of a button to go directly to those channels. It makes it very easy. They even use their little symbol for either Twitter or Instagram. And I mean, hey, even YouTube, um, it's got a direct link there. So again, just to tie everything together um, makes it really easy for your followers. And it might just get you more followers on some of those other channels. We know Facebook is usually the most popular channel for most of the school districts that we certainly serve. Um, but maybe you can get some more eyes on some of those other accounts as well. That that's it for today's tip. Now let's get to today's interview. Welcome to the podcast, Ian. Good morning. Great to be here. Or whatever time it is you're listening, I yeah, guess. Yeah, and you know, um, Ian doesn't really want you to watch this on YouTube because of his background. <laughs> but I happen to be doing this interview on what did you call today? Bowtie Tuesday. It's Bowtie Tuesday at Wiley ISD and Ian is looking dapper. So I've got Ian Halperin and he is the executive director of community relations and marketing with Wiley ISD, which as I say that name, Ian, I can't even believe you have time to talk to me because you've got a lot of responsibilities there. But why don't you introduce yourself to, to our listeners? Sure. Well, I, I appreciate you taking the time to have me on. I, I always love sharing school PR with our group. You know, we, we talk a lot about the relationships and the, and the friendships we build through our SPRAs and our great vendors and partners like you. And um, I just I love sharing, I uh, love communicating, which is why I guess I do what I do. But I, I started like so many of our colleagues in the newspaper business and, you know, realized that that was not the best future. And the hours were cruddy and met a lot of great school PR people in that role. And so an opening came up and I, I will say this was 24 years ago. I've been doing this a long time, it's awesome. gray, and I, I had hair back then, um, but I got into school PR in Mesquite ISD and got to learn from some great people. 
And then about 10 years ago, 11 years ago, made the move to Wiley. And it's, it's been great. My uh, one daughter has already graduated from high school here. My other one is a junior here. It's our home. Uh, proud to be involved in this community. Proud to be doing the community relations and the marketing in a community that, that I like so much. You've been in school PR for 24 years. You've seen so much change in that time, right? I, I, yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, when I started, we were still using the stuff called film, 35 millimeter film and going to photo mat and having prints made. Uh, newsletters were still cut and paste or uh, page mill, uh, you know, very, very early Adobe I mean, it, it, yes, it's changed drastically. A lot of printing, uh, obviously no apps, no cell phones or, or cell phones were just a phone. They were not a smart device. Uh, you know, we still had calling trees where you had 50 phone numbers that you called for inclement weather. You still relied on the mainstream media to get the words out. So yes, it, it has evolved quite a bit. And, and in some cases, we think about those times back then and think, gosh, that was so complicated. But, you know, in today's world uh, with instant communication, and obviously this, this podcast is all about social media, um, in some cases it makes it easier, but in some cases it makes it a lot more challenging too, right? Oh, absolutely. You know, the biggest difference, I think, is the 24 always on cycle that social media is you know it used to be you dealt with local reporters or you printed something and so you had hard deadlines you were still on the clock in some regards but once that thing went to the printer it was done you know now it's okay it went to the printer but i'm going to post different pieces of it online and i'm going to put a pdf and i'm going to tweet out a, a little teaser for it i mean so it it literally never stops and then once it comes out people want to comment critique and there's plenty of forum for that so yeah, the, the nature of the cycle has what's really changed. Yeah, definitely. Well, tell me a little bit about the size of Wiley ISD and kind of how your communications department is set up. Sure, so that, that's a great question. We actually just um, did a little bit of change uh, this year. We have uh, just topped 18,000 students. Okay. When I came here 10 years ago, we were at about 12. So we have seen a tremendous growth in, in the last 10, 11 years. We are, for those of you that don't know, we are just outside of Dallas. Uh, we're in Collin County, kind of between Plano and Garland, two really big districts. We're a little bit landlocked, uh, but still a lot of farmland. And so people are coming here uh, primarily for the school district, honestly, but it's affordable housing. It is close enough to the big work centers that you can get to a job in a reasonable amount of time. And so when I came here, my title was executive director of community relations, I'm sorry, communications and community relations. And throughout this last with COVID and, and just all the things that have been going on, we've re-examined a lot of different things, the way we operate as a district. And it, it made sense now to kind of divide up the responsibilities. And so that's where you get the community relations and marketing. And then we also have an executive director of communications. And so she is, is new to the district, but not new to the profession. And she now is doing more of the social media type stuff. I'll be honest, she's younger and it comes more natively to her and she has a master's in strategic communications. So she uh, has a lot of great skills that she brings to that side of it. And then um, we have a webmaster. We have a couple of assistants that work with us. We've got some video people. I've got an AV technician that kind of helps keep it all running. And so we, we operate together, but in, in two separate focus areas. Okay. So maybe eight or nine people, do you think? Uh, yeah, six or seven. Maybe okay, total, all right. Between the two divisions, um, you know, and, and, and uh, we have a, a person that's in the athletic department that does some athletic marketing, and I'm working with her quite a bit. We're working together on, on some of those partnerships and expanding those. You know, at the end of the day, it, it's really just about making sure that our message is being heard. It's about being transparent. And it's about serving our students, our teachers, and our community. And so we all have the same goal. It, it just, these things have become so specialized and, and like you said, so time consuming that it just made sense to split them up where we could have a little more time to focus. Yeah. I, I think that's working. I'll let you know in six months. <laughs> Well, it doesn't feel like it right now, but right, yeah, kind of figuring it all out. But um, the 
you know, the fact that your role specifically has the marketing piece, um, we all, I mean, whether we're public schools, private schools, anything, we have to market ourselves. And I think it's big in Texas with all the things you guys do with sports. And that definitely is a draw for some. And so um, that makes sense as well that you've got kind of got somebody in the sports arena too that does a lot of, a lot of work. It does. And I've always said there's a difference between a captive audience, captive audience and a supportive audience. You know, people say, well, gosh, people live in your district. They pay taxes. They've got to go to school. Well, yeah, they have to. But we like them to feel good about it. We want them to support us. And, and you know, I say us in, in the global sense. We want them to support their teachers in the classroom. We want them to support their teams or their club or whatever activity their kid is involved with. You know, there, there's so much beyond what we do as a district effort. And, and I'm really cognizant of that because I want to make sure I'm not. I'm not taking a sponsor from a club or a team. You know, there's limited money, especially with, with the pandemic. Businesses are still struggling a little bit. And so, you know, people that used to sponsor things used to have no problem writing even a two or $300 check to the booster club. You know, that, that's a big deal for them now. And so we try to make sure we, we are doing the good thing with that and, and not overburdening our community. Sure. Um, so how does social media fit in with your department then now? Maybe that's more on the other area, but just like what channels are you guys on and kind of how do you how do you split that up? Sure. So we have we have a, a pretty big Facebook presence. Uh, we, we spend a lot of time on that. Uh, Twitter is also very big. Uh, we we have a lot of clubs and groups that start their own Twitter feeds and, and that becomes kind of hard to handle. Uh, at some point, I think that's one area we would try and focus on and, and make sure just, you know, it's so much about retweeting and not necessarily creating new content, but finding what's out there and then making sure they adhere to our, our standards and our guidelines. Um, but but we do spend a lot of time on that. Our, our superintendent loves to communicate. Uh, his, his original, his bachelor's degree is in marketing. And so he understands probably more than some maybe about how that works. And so he, he is very cognizant of what we do, appreciative of what we do. Uh, he does a lot of videos now. That's kind of a new thing for him. And I'm not talking about fancy produced videos. I'm talking about like this. He sets his camera up. He's got a remote. He talks for 90 seconds and he puts it out there. And people get to see his face and hear it directly from him. And so that, that's gone a long way. He did those daily at the start of the COVID outbreak when we were on quarantine uh, just to let parents know, hey, we're still working. We're still here. We're still thinking about your kids. And he's continued that. Now, he doesn't quite do them daily. Uh, but but at least one, if not two a week, he's communicating with it directly to our staff and our families. Well, that's what I really noticed on your Facebook page was a lot of video from your superintendent. So you don't have you didn't have to really talk him into that because he already kind of believed in that one when he started. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. He and it, it's evolved. Uh, you know, initially we weren't doing as many videos, but he is a very he likes to be out on campuses. He likes to visit every campus. At least. We have 20. 20 campuses. Okay. So it's doable. He can get to every campus during a week and see people and check on people. And so when he couldn't do that, it, it really affected him. And so he felt like video is the next best thing to be in there. And so he really, he always done some, but uh, he really amped up his video game, like I said, during, during the early parts of COVID. And he would bring, he brought me in to talk about how we're going to communicate. He brought food services in to talk about how we're going to feed kids, a lot of stuff on instructions. He'd have board members come and talk about some of the changes we're making. So he, he brings other people in sometimes. But, but again, people have come to expect that. And, and I think that's what it is. It, it, you're building trust. You're, you're building a reputation. You're getting people used to looking in the same place. So as long as you're consistent with that, um, that's the expectation they have. And so when, when things start to go bad, they know they can kind of need to be there in that space. Yeah. And so you said he didn't really do anything fancy. He just set up his phone. No. He, and, and even when he was like interviewing you or in a, interviewing food service, it was just like in selfie mode and you guys were, were chatting. Yeah, he, we actually, uh, he had the theater tech kids build him a little set and move part of his office around. And, and, you know, I mean, the lighting and everything has gotten so much more uh, affordable. He's got two little lights he puts in there. And, and sometimes he does a good mic. Sometimes he just, he doesn't, um, you know, and, and, as a professional, you know, there's different thoughts on how much money you need to spend to do a good podcast, to do a, a quick little video. Uh, you know, he, he's not making Academy Award motion picture. He's making a 90 second infomercial for families. And so as long as they get to hear the message, that's what they want. They recognize his face, they recognize his voice. And so it, it works really well. Yeah. And I, I think uh, I've, I've heard, 
you know, studies uh, that a lot of those more authentic videos reach more people anyways, because they can relate. Um, and so that's great. And, and he tries to keep those to about 90 seconds. Is that right? He, he's got, I will say his pot, he's doing a podcast and those get a little bit long and we've talked about that, but no, he, he, you and he does, he, he listens to that and he does, he keeps them a minute, 90 seconds. Um, occasionally if there, if there's two people or a little bit more, they might go a little bit longer, okay. but you know, he, he's like everybody else. Time is important and attention spans are shorter and shorter. And so the sooner you can get your message out, the quicker, more concise, the better everybody's going to be for it. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Um, so you guys also have a strong district app, is that right? We do, um, and, and Doug Bellamy, our, our webmaster and design person is in charge of that. Uh, and I tell people, we were definitely not the first district to come out with an app. We waited a little bit longer. We did a lot of surveys with our families, with our staff. What do you want in an app? Uh, and I'm, I'm not gonna badmouth anybody else's app. Um, we just did the things that were most effective that our parents said they used the most. We went back and looked at our web page and saw which pages get the most hits and have the most people spending time on. And we incorporated those into the app. Uh, in fact, we j just added our messaging system to the app just in the last couple of weeks. And so we have over 100 percent of our student population in downloads. So that means hopefully every parent, uh, we realize there's two parent families but or multi parent families. <laughs> But we have a really good saturation rate with our app. We're very happy about that. Okay. So I, now I know listeners are going to say, okay, what were those most popular pages on your website that you made sure to have on your app? Uh, I'm putting you on the spot. but Lunch menu is a big thing. Yeah. People want to know lunch menus. Uh, that's always a thing. Uh, being able to pay uh, school fees through the app, check class schedules. Uh, the principal notices come through the app now. The district notices come through the app. Uh, we have a where's my bus app now feature that we pay for kids parents can track their bus and know when the kids gonna get on and off the bus know when the bus arrives at school um, I'm gonna look at mine real quick and just kind yeah. of it, and is this an app you guys developed or did you purchase this app we we worked with our our partner our online and web provider oh, partner and who is so that we, we can give them a shout out blackboard. blackboard okay yes and so uh, we we were very hands-on from the beginning um, Doug is, has a great relationship with them, and we beta test some of their products because of that relationship. So we have the ability to, um, uh, the calendar is a big thing. Um, yeah. Chris, now, um, uh, our, our bus thing, like I said, um, our newsletter, we have a separate link for athletics. Uh, and then we have the bully report, um, the anonymous tip reporting app, some of those kind of things. Um, it, it, it's very robust. It, it doesn't have things like the school song or weather or, you know, things that you can find other places. We kept it really focused on the Wally ISD things that parents wanted. Right. And a lot the of websites. What's that? I uh, said so the online payment center is a big thing too. That way parents, if they're sitting at home and they forgot to pay something, it's no, I don't have to run a check up to the school or transfer money to the kid. I can make the payment right from the app. Yeah. You're just trying to make it easy, meeting people where they're at, kind of giving them everything. And then, you know, Blackboard is, is a great partner for you guys. There's a lot of web providers that now have an app feature that you can definitely uh, incorporate. And, and then does it have the social media feeds in there as well, or is that separate? That is separate. Um, okay. I, I see that, and I, and I, you know what? I, I don't follow them through here. It, it, it could possibly, let's see. Oh yeah. It has activity stream. So it does. Okay. Yeah. It does. Um, sorry. I should probably know these things. That, that, um, that's okay. it, it absolutely does. Um, but we also did a, a very aggressive campaign when we launched it. Uh, we did posters, we did social media, direct mail. And then even now, uh, we really try to drive people to the app, whether it's uh, school closings, crisis communications, any kind of update. We, we really promote uh, that as the source for information to our parents and, and new parents especially. Okay. Now, uh, just switching gears back to social media. I mean, you're a big district with 20 kids. I say you're a big district, Diane. You probably say you're a small district, right? We, we, you know, because you were at Teesboro, we've had this conversation. It, it's, it's all relative. You know, in, in some states, they're counties and they're big. Uh, we are probably a small, large, I mean, you know, we're surrounded by some big ones, but there's, there's small ones too. So, I, yeah. Me, me, medium size, but but still 20 campuses. And and yes, I, Ian and I first got to meet at the TSPR conference, which TSPR this last year in 2021 was fairly small because of 
obviously the pandemic. Um, I am coming back next year. I'm super excited. Yeah. It's going to be yeah. a little bigger. I mean, your Teespur event is usually the size of almost Enspra, right? We are very fortunate. Yes. Um, Teespra, when I started, was about 200 and something members. We're close to a thousand now. Uh, obviously, it's a big state, but the, the profession has grown. The amount of communications professionals has grown. Uh, we have a few superintendents that are members. Yeah, we're very fortunate. We have a great executive director in Lindsay Snyder, and we usually have about 800 people at our. We, before COVID, we had about 800 people at our at our conference. So it, it, it's a great group. Um, yeah, really. Very proud of yeah, it. really good people. It was so so fun to be there, and I can't wait to see even. And more. I would say we met in real life, IRL. And, and we, we've we've done this and and chatted and and you know some of the Enspra uh, Twitter feeds and Enspra groups are so great. Um, you know, we certainly knew of each other, but it was great for you to, to make the trip down. And I'm not saying you just left where you are to come to Texas in February because of the weather. That was just a bonus. It was a very big bonus. And so this next year, I'm even bringing my husband with. So um, well, it's a great resort. I've, I've seen the pictures and it, it's a full on resort. So it should be fun. Yeah. And uh, just a shout out for everybody listening. I mean, you, you have state chapters in most states, not everywhere, but if you don't have one in your state, um, but we're, what we're talking about is the Texas School Public Relations Association. Um, great activity, great support group uh, for you. And then, of course, that feeds up into Enspro, which is the national group, um, which I am a proud member, and so is Ian, and and uh, that's where we get a lot of our professional development and make awesome connections. So, um, so that's great. So, back to my question about you know you got eighteen thousand students, you got twenty campuses, you got a lot of stories going on with you know still a fairly limited you know team. How yeah. do you get your stories that end up going on social media? Well, there's a couple things, Andrea. You know, the, the first thing is it's about relationships. So um, because I say we're relatively small, um, we know people. You know, I, I know all my principals. My principals have my cell phone. Um, I, I try to still get out to campuses during the week. Uh, you know, even even last year uh, when we were sort of on restricted COVID duty, we still got out to campuses. We still took photos of the activities going on. Um, and then, you know, we have a, a, a pretty good system of having campuses let us know what's going on. Uh, we have a campus webmaster that we pay a stipend to, and I've had some colleagues reach out about that. I would encourage you, uh, once you get above four or five campuses, you've got to have some kind of help. And so Doug, our, our district webmaster, trains them. Uh, and so we have campus people that are helping us provide information, helping keep their content fresh, helping keep their calendars updated, helping put new pictures up. And so when we need things, we can get them from, from those people. Uh, same thing with booster clubs, the sports teams. Uh, we, we really try to balance it because th there is, I mean, we have two high schools that compete at the large category. And so I don't want to be all sports. I mean, we have great marching bands. We have great cheerleaders. We have great chess clubs. We have great powerlifting. Uh, and, and really it's just, it's making yourself accessible to those sponsors and those coaches and those teams to know that um, we're here for you. And then once they start seeing things on social media, then it kind of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Hey, why did they get coverage? Well, they told me about it. Next time, email me when you're having something or send me a photo. Uh, and, and then it, once the ball gets rolling, it, it really picks up steam quickly. Yeah. And I just love, you know, it all starts with relationships. So building those great relationships with the leadership team, and then that's going to flow down as you cover the different activities. Um, and it's a really good point of, hey, they got covered. Why did they get covered? Well, you know, tell me about it. I'd love to be able to share share your stories as well. So it's that's a powerful thing. Um, uh, and I've always worked in a multi high school district. When I started in Mesquite, they were four and went to five, which is a whole nother thing. And, and then when I came here, the second high school had just opened. And so I've been with them kind of the 10 year journey from their first graduating class, their first varsity football team. And so a lot of those people are still around. And, you know, you, you try to be fair uh, and, and we do, we keep a little chart just so we're not going to the same schools. It's easy to go to the schools where your kids are because you're dropping them off, you're more involved. You know, I, obviously I only have kids at one of the high schools. And so they tease me that I have more of their school colors than the other high school. And, and maybe I do, but you know, I still cover the other high school and, and try to promote them every chance I get. Yeah, that's that's a great point. So you just kind of have a little tally, nothing a fi nothing major, but just something that you're yeah, kind of we, keeping track. Yeah, Google Doc, and, and okay. we just keep track of, of the dates that we visit. You know, and, and sometimes it's it may not result in a photo or story, but I go by and just check on somebody, or uh, you know, we've done some things where we feature 
staff members. And so we definitely want to make sure we get to every campus when we're doing things like that. Yeah. So it's, I don't want to say it's competitive, but we want to be fair and showcase everybody. Right. So you indicated one of your biggest social media wins was with your branding campaign. So can you kind of share a little bit about that, of what you did and, and how you made that successful? Sure. Uh, about, I guess it's been, I lose track of time, but uh, maybe four years ago, uh, our superintendent really wanted to kind of unify us under a brand. And so we went back and forth on what that looked like. And um, we have, obviously you have your high school logos and your athletic team logos and your mascots and the elementaries have their cute little things. And this would be something, I, I don't want to say more official, but a little more uh, distinctive. And so I'm going to hold this up, but what we came up with, with our W and so we created, and these are all the 20 school colors and their official school colors and then the district logo. And so we created these brands and they're very simple. I mean, it's not that it's just a circle. And, and we even went back and forth on what else should be in the circle. Um, and from that, we dug really redid our whole style guide and branding guide. And so now we have every PMS color is spelled out, how we use that logo, the amount of degrees that that W is tilted, everything. And so when we launched that again, we, the super it helps when the superintendent is the one driving it because then you get a little bit more compliance people are more likely to want to do it and i'll be honest it, it grew on me at first i was kind of like oh that's just a simple w but we did car stickers with every school campus we did little flags and at our convocation event every campus every employee got a little flag and they waved their school color flag and now you drive around town and you see all the different school colors. And when you're in a, a game on the road, you know, hey, I can park by this car because they're one of us. Or you see them in a drive-through in another part of Dallas. It, it's really created a sense of unity within the community. And it, it carries through to the stuff we give out, to our, our handout items, um, our web design. When we did the, the uh, branding, we also came up with a color pattern. We came up with usage guides, style guide. Uh, and again, having those campus webmasters really helped us push that out so that we have uniformity across all of our campuses. Do you have a link to that style guide that we could share with our listeners? Or we do, it... mollyisd.net slash branding. So if you go to our website awesome. and it just, slash, and, and I've shared it many times uh, with on some of our NSPRA chat rooms and our TSPRA chat rooms, uh, you know, it, it, it's some of it we took some, from some other district and some other corporate things. You know, we tell people you don't ever see the Nike logo in a different format. You never see Coke spelled in a different font. Um, if, if we're going to be serious about our brand, if our brand is going to reflect who we are, then we need to treat it that way. And and again, having the superintendent behind it, it really makes the difference because he, he, he supports that. Yeah. And, and just to describe, it's the W and then you've got the Wiley IS. Do you have Wiley Independent School District? Yeah. On the outside? And, and there are some. There's ones without, there are some ways you can do it without um, the wording in case it's going to be a smaller embroidery. And then each of the school names is across the, is across it. Um, they have one for their school. Okay. So I know you can't do everything, but, but, and, and when a vendor calls and says, Hey, I'm making the shirts for this school, we, we send them the colors, we send them the link, we send them the logos, uh, you know, so that everything is consistent. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I'll be honest, we're not, we're not going to fire somebody for using the logo wrong. But they are going to, again, the superintendent has an expectation. So you can either meet that or not and, and decide if you want to take that risk or not. And it, it took a year or two. And again, we're a school district. So we weren't ripping labels off of cars and the water towers. As they faded and as they needed to be replaced, we went with the new one. Uh, you know, we, we did it strategically and, and without going too crazy. Um, but, you know, we, we still see some shirts that some departments don't get new shirts every year. So they've got the old logo and that's fine. But we work really hard to uh, make sure this W logo is standardized across district. Okay. And the district logo is black. And then all yes. of the schools, all the 20 yes. schools have a little bit color difference. And then they have their name. Yes. I love so it. If you see, it. It says Wally Independent Schools across the top. And then their school name is in the bottom part of the circle. Okay. So I'm sure there's probably a more high tech way to do this than me holding up a. Yeah, well, we'll we'll link. I'll link in the show notes to the to the um the website that you indicated yeah, that Wiley great. ISD slash branding. Yeah. Um, but I just think it's it's great for people to realize that it doesn't have to be super complicated, but it can be really really effective. And you know, you kind of described what it meant uh, when you see those things out across town, and you know, see people wearing that and putting them in their car stickers and all of that. That's that's great. So um, it can it can be really powerful to 
to to unify everybody in in a district you know your size and and bigger yeah it is and, and that and that was the goal really to remind people that while they may be a campus they're part of something bigger they're part of the wiley independent school district and so we went with that w so that people would know hey th this is the thing that binds us all together you know if if you look at if you watch an nfl game or even a college game and you look at a football player's jersey or a baseball player they've got their team logos and colors everywhere but somewhere very visible is the nfl shield or the mlb logo on their sleeve you know they acknowledge the fact that they're part of a bigger organization that makes them stronger and so that's kind of what we've done with this w and so that's it, sometimes it's on the sleeve of some things um it's in different places but that's the whole point behind it yeah Absolutely. So our time's going really fast, and we like to talk. So um, I just kind of wanted to end with what's your best social media tip for our listeners um, to take in from you? Oh, gosh. Uh, it, it, you know, there's there's good tips. About, I, I think the thing is to remember that, you know, everybody has a voice, but that doesn't mean you necessarily have to listen to it. Uh, I think we get too caught up in trying to appease the loudest voice in the room and in the room by a social media platform. You know, I, I I fall for it personally. I don't I don't like to be called out. Um, I want to respond. I want to defend. I want to explain. I think sometimes we have to learn to just let that go. That remember on on the whole of what we're doing is important, and to keep moving forward and not get distracted by those people shouting in the corners. That's really good advice right now, Ian, because, you know, all the back to school and everything, everybody's got an opinion. Um, you're just the messenger. Um, and unless they're threatening someone or, you know, swearing or whatever, um, you can let it go and just try to keep focusing on on telling that positive story. Um, if people, if listeners want to stay connected to Ian, what's the best way? Uh, you know, I'm on Facebook personally. I'm on Twitter personally at Nikon Boy One. I, I was still am a professional photographer, so I've got Nikon Boy One. Uh, that's probably the Twitter's probably the best way to reach me. Uh, you know, I, people have my cell phone, text me. Um, I, I try to be accessible to colleagues, um, so feel free to reach out. I, I, as you mentioned, one of the great things about about Enspra and, and and all these organizations is is that we're there for each other. Um, you know, superintendents have their superintendent friends to call, principals have their, you know, for us, this is it, you and, and, and the other people that watch these, these show these podcasts and listen, um, we've got to be there for each other. Cause like you said, now is a, it's a pretty rough time. I'll be honest. Yeah. And, uh, I, I appreciate you taking the time. I know you were able to help a lot of people listening today and I'll definitely link your uh, Twitter handle. Would you mind if I linked your email address just in case right. people No, go right ahead. I'll, okay. I'll, that'd be great. Yeah, All right. Call me the best way i'll do that too in the show notes you guys um thank you so much for joining me today i am thank you for coming to teespro we love having you down here and, and sharing your knowledge i mean you know it's for people who don't have as big a staff or maybe as much experience you know there has to be resources for us and so i appreciate the things you and your group provide to us i mean it, and for people like me I need younger people with new ideas to, the, we talked about, we do a whole show on reverse mentoring and I have, but you know, there, there's a lot of new things going on out there that, that I kind of struggle to keep up with. So it, it's great to have resources like you out there. Yeah. Well, and I'm always learning. I, and I did my first Instagram reels yesterday Wow. and it, it got over 13,000 views in like less than an hour. So, um, and then it didn't go up a lot more than that, but I was like, I only have like 600 and some followers on my business page, you know? So anyways, I'm learning all I can about that. So then maybe I can help teach it as well. But, um, we're, we're kind of older dogs in this, in this thing, but we're, we can learn new tricks and, uh, Absolutely. my kids are really great mentors. Right. And sometimes they're really good at laughing at me too, but, um, but yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I won't even show them this because it would be <laughs> Well, we're all in this together. You're right. We have the best uh, little network with all of our school communicators. So uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. And we'll see you next week on the podcast. Bye, Ian. Thanks, Andrea. Have a great day. You too.